Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 130 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is an awesome shark that is just built to be the absolute baddest machine in the ocean. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The Short Fin Mako Shark. Now, the short fin mako shark, or scientific name, scientific name Isurus oxyrhynchus. Again, that's Isurus oxyrhynchus. It is part of the family Lem Lemnidae. Lamnidae. Oh my goodness, I just can't speak at all today. Uh, Lamnidae is a subset of the family of mackerel sharks called white sharks. And yes, this is the family that has the great white shark um, in it. Um, so, and as you can see from this picture, it kind of has that mackerel shark look. Um, looks like a predator, and it is a predator. Um, they're very widespread. These sharks are found all across the world, and they're found in all temperate and tropical ocean. Pretty much, don't go to the North or South Pole, and you could find these. But, they are a pelagic shark, meaning they're in open water, so you're rarely... And I say rarely, not exclusively, but rarely you will find these close to shore. They really prefer to be in open ocean, away from the shoreline, and a lot of that has to do with their feeding habits. Um, <coughs> sorry. In terms of depths, you're going to find these anywhere from 0 to 150 meters. So, 0 feet to 490 feet. Um, got a little bit of distance. I mean, it's, in terms of actual ocean fish, especially pelagic ocean fish, it's actually not a wide range of depth. Sometimes, you know, we've talked about some of these fish going zero to a thousand feet, but so it's kind of more surface water, but it's definitely up there. Um, something interesting about this i've talked about their range found in there they're actually highly migratory but migratory may not be the right word they just travel a long way which i know that people think might be thinking oh they're that's the same thing they're traveling they're migrating that's not really how these would be okay it'd be more that these have an extremely large range um home range individual range because migratory patterns is when usually, um, and this, the definition that I sort of go with for migratory patterns is meaning that they are traveling strictly from one place to another looking to do something, either feed, reproduce, whatever. And these fish do do that, but mainly these fish are just traveling around looking for food. So that's where I use the term home range where they just have an extremely large area that they're just constantly moving. And you might be wondering like, how big? Well, in December of 1998, there was a shark that was tagged in California, off obviously off the coast of California. Um, it was captured um, not too far away from California, but it was kind of in, more in the middle of the Pacific by a Japanese uh, research vessel. Um, so it went from California to the middle of the Pacific. And when they measured the distance, it was 2,776 meter kilometers, sorry, which is 1,725 miles. That's a long, large, large distance. But the more impressive one, impressive one is that another specimen that was tagged, and I don't remember exactly where this one was, it was tagged that, and it swam 2,128 kilometers, which is 1,322 miles in 37 days, meaning that it averaged 58 kilometers or 36 miles per day. Um, that is an extreme distance of traveling for animals. Um, most animals do not travel anywhere close to that amount and to do it consistently at that speed that's really really impressive um in terms of size it is a large ish shark i'm not gonna say that it's just an enormous shark 
but it is on the larger side of sharks, um, considering that most sharks are actually small, if you did not know that. They average about two and a half to 3.2 meters, which is about eight to 11 feet in length. And they usually weigh about 135 to 230 kilograms, which is about 300 to 500 pounds, plus or minus a couple of pounds. Um, but they can be larger. There was a specimen from the 1950s, I believe in Turkey, is where it would have been caught, that had an estimated size of somewhere between 5.7 and 6.2 meters, which is 18.7 to 20.3 feet. Um, now, people, you might be wondering, well, yeah, but that's from the 1950s. How can you have that range from an estimated size? Well, the size was done through pictures. Um, so scientists looked at it and did measurements, and they're like, okay, approximately this should be how much this shark should, what the length of this shark should be. Um, but they're fairly confident on that range. So it's not one of those things where they're just looking at a picture and like, ah, it looks about three people. No, they, there is some stuff going on there. But the largest one ever taken on hook and line was 600 kilograms, 1,300 pounds, almost three times the upper end of average. So they can be extremely heavy and extremely large. And I believe that one was around 15 to 17 feet, um, which would be five to six-ish meters. Um, so it can, it can get up there in size. And speaking of kind of their body and their size and their weight, these things are muscular. They are literally a cylinder of power, um, just an extreme cylinder of power. You got this extreme conical snout, and then it's got this very round body. It doesn't have like the sort of flat sides and everything. It is a cylinder. Um, it is a torpedo, and it is sheer power. We've talked about great whites. We've talked about this. This thing is definitely um, one of the best. It's got this brilliant blue and this white underbelly. And something interesting to note, um, the Mako actually has a good demarcation between their upper um, blue coloration and their underbelly. A lot of times when you see something like that, there'll be some shaded spots or throughout to where it does a very gradual change and it's hard to tell where it stops. This one is very demarcated. Um, very, very demarcated. They do have sh sh no, sorry, short pectoral fins. Um, I don't remember when the other species was, but semi-recently, the mako shark was actually split. There's the short fin mako shark, and then there's the um, long fin mako shark. Apparently, they're very easy to distinguish between the two. Um, one has longer fins, the other one, and one of them is much slower and not as mobile. Um, but YouTube doesn't care about coloration patterns. I hope my uh, my audience cares a little bit about color patterns and things like that. What people want to see is teeth. Um, and yes, it does have very, very good teeth. Um, I mean, this thing is built to be a predator and it is an aggressive, aggressive feeder. Um, but you, you can, you, you look at this jaw and you're like, okay, this thing is meant to eat bigger things. And it is, it is. And here's a better example of like, you know, a shark from the side. Um, anyway, so... Yes, the short fin mako shark is in a super aggressive feeder and they consume up to about 3% of their body weight each day and it takes about one and a half to two days to digest. And that's actually a pretty critical thing. Most sharks are actually much slower to digest their food. And that's gonna become up a pretty important here in a bit. So what they do is they actually use their speed and sight 
to find and attack prey. And you might be thinking, well, most predators do. Well, you have to remember, in all the sharks that we've talked about, most of the sharks are actually using what are called the ampullae of Lorenzini, which are these electroreceptive organs that actually um, go out and sense minor electrical fields. That's how they usually pinpoint their prey. And shortfin mako sharks, they have those ampullae of Lorenzini. You can see them right there, but they don't rely on them quite as much as sight, sound, um, smell, like they are very, they use all their senses. This thing is the apex predator. I am firmly convinced that the short fin mako shark might be the most apex predator I've ever seen. The speed that they can uh, achieve is insane. They, um, they have like the fastest speed of any known shark. They swim at speeds of at least 74 kilometers per hour, which is about 45 miles per hour, and can achieve even faster speeds, which allows them to leap up to like 20 feet, which would be about six and a half meters out of the water. So how do you escape something like that? Um, but not only are they extremely fast, um, and this is scientific data, the short fin mako shark has the record for the strongest bite measured by any shark species. This was recorded in 2020. This wasn't a, you know, this or that. This was recorded in 2020 in a scientific paper. The short fin mako shark had 3,000 pounds of bite force which is about 13,000 newtons. That, so, 3,000 pounds trying to bite through your arm. With these teeth, your arm's gone. Like, it's, this thing is the apex predator. Um, and what do they eat? Well, kind of anything. They'll eat other sharks. Their primary uh, thing that they're actually known for eating is actually billfish, which would be like swordfish, especially when they get larger. Larger. That's why they have to be so fast and so powerful. They're actually going after these extremely large, dangerous fish because there have been mako sharks that have been found impaled by swordfish bills, and they're going after these things. License plates. That's more of like the tiger shark, but this thing is dominant um just a little fun fact before we get into the interesting fact young mako sharks actually have smaller and pointier teeth than large adults and that's because the young sharks eat a lot of cephalopods squids octopuses smaller pointier teeth allow them to get um better bite and hold on to those octopus octopi um whereas the adults going after these large fish are just literally speeding into them taking a bite and going going go out um because of their speed and aggression they are actually endangered because they're a highly prized game fish that is also harvested for their meat so there's this is one of the few sharks that are actively harvest harvested for meat um so they are in a little bit of trouble but the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on um, sorry that this one's a little long. Um, how does a shark get to these speeds? Take, take, uh, digest their food quicker than most other sharks. Well, that is because this fish is an endotherm endothermic species. This is an endothermic species. What I mean by that is, is in the vernacular terms it would be warm-blooded um people just think sharks and fish and all these things reptiles are cold-blooded organisms you know getting their warmth from the environment but that is not actually the case in a lot of fish we've talked about it before um the mako shark actually is a warm-blooded specimen. It is an endothermic, meaning it is internally regulating its metabolism. 
that allows it to have increased metabolism and these multiple different muscle fibers you know we talked about how the short fin mako shark actually travels long distances they do that at incredible speeds but they have a different set of muscle fibers that allow them to not only travel that extreme distance but they can travel that extreme distance and still attack extremely quickly because they have two different kinds of muscle fibers and well they have more than that but you can do your own research and that this video is already running a little bit long so you know this fish is that's why it has to kind of stay in these sort of temperate and tropical oceans even though they can kind of get a little colder but these fish are actually warm-blooded and that's how they maintain this extremely high aggress aggression digestion rate and their need to feed these things are built to be the predator of the oceans so don't get bit by one but thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope to see you again if i don't please be safe have a great day please leave a like comment and subscribe if you do i really appreciate it hope to see you again take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones and peace happy new year's